Jedan, dva, test. Okay, if we may start, because we are pretty late, just 30 seconds, but it's okay. We, we, started with, we said we start at 3 p.m., so we are here. Before I introduce myself, uh, I wanted to just to ask you, are you really into startups? Do you really want to do it? Did you make up your mind about that idea that you really want to do a startup, <laughs> stay behind that, and do that as a first step in your career? If not, if you haven't asked yourself until now, this presentation will make you think about it. And you sh should think hardly about that step, because if you do the first step wrong, then all your career has to suffer because of that ne negative influence, negative experience in the first step. So who the fuck is talking to you? So I'm Nedim Šabić, and I studied information design in Germany. And I got a degree which I gave my mother, which, he, which she hang on the wall. And before that, before I even started to study information design, I was already working as an SEO. SEO is a shortcut on abbreviation of search engine optimization. That means that I bring up websites on Google for some specific keywords. And I did that already 10 years, so I'm one of the oldest SEO guys on the planet. And I did affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing means that you sell stuff from other people and do marketing for them. So you're selling somebody's product and you, give, uh, you get a commission for that. That was, uh, I was doing do those stuff, SEO and affiliate, all the time. So for, from my 16th, uh, 16th year of my life, I did that. Then I started for working for some small companies like Robert Bush, uh, Thurston Krupp, Porsche and Audi. And they wanted to keep me there, but I didn't want to stay there. And then I ca came back to Bosnia in 2009 and opened the first SEO agency in Bosnia. And at that moment, nobody did know, didn't know what SEO actually is, but I had the courage to open an SEO company. Then I helped Avalon. Avalon is a Croatian hosting company. I helped them to grow in Croatia firstly, and then expand to Bosnia and the USA. And I founded also a company in Germany which makes mobile apps. The name of the company is Secret, therefore it isn't there on the presentation. And I'm a business angel in the Bizu network, so that means I invest in other startups, in other companies, give them money for some things. I will show you in that presentation who can get our money and who in the usual case can get money at all. So. I thought five years ago that my idea is brilliant and that, my, that somebody has to pay to listen actually to me, to listen to those great ideas. But then I get, to get in touch with some really cool guys and I saw that my ideas are actually very old and they are not special at all. Then I started to develop my ideas and so that's really hard because I didn't think through. And then I invested in some companies and then I made many mistakes, short to set, to see that an, an idea isn't worth a penny. Why is that? I will show you that. But in the moment when you hear that sentence and somebody uh, tells you that your idea isn't worth a penny, you feel like, you feel bad. You feel bad because you have a big and positive opinion about your ideas, but they really don't worth a penny. Are you not sure about that? I'm, I'm pretty sure that you are not sure. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times I repeat that, that your idea isn't, isn't good at all. Uh, I will show you one example which is very old. So just think this example through the actual time we live in. So who invented the bulb? Edison. Everybody thinks it's Edison, but it actually he wasn't it. In, in 1860, Sir Joseph Wilson Swan invented the bulb. In 1878, he demonstrated it. So that's actually the problem. In 78, he demonstrated, firstly, in Newcastle, his bulb to all the people. In 77, Charles Francis Bush manufactures already bulbs. One year before, actually, the inventor of the bulb demonstrated it. And in 79, Edison 
claimed itself as the inventor and discovered a new method to make a better bulb. So we know Edison as the inventor of the bulb because he invented the better bulb, not that he invented the, the first bulb ever. So Edison was a clever businessman which, who patented that idea of the bulb and produced it and made a lot of money and made a fortune out of that. But the uh, claim of that slide is that you should be fast because at the same time you develop something the, in the whole world is it's really possible that somebody is developing the same idea at the same time. So how many people have the same idea right now as yours? You would say, no, my, my idea is so special. Nobody is working on that right now. I'm, for, I'm sure. I, I have a local plan and that local thing, nobody can take that from me. Don't be that, that kind of sure because it, it is really possible that in Sarajevo, five people working on the same idea, especially if you told somebody already about your idea. So I had two times in my, I, I lost two best friends in my life because they stole my idea, okay? <laughs> And I was, I'm talking and I'm working on something and he's listening to me and working on the other side for which I don't know already on that idea too. So how many, how many people are working on the realization right now? There is a difference. You can have an idea and talk about that idea for five, ten years if you don't realize that if you don't develop that idea, it just stays an idea and it, the idea dies when you die or if you forgot, forget the idea. But if you start to realize it, to develop it, then it's a difference. Then not, not so many people are, uh, are up in the realization to that idea right now as you. So you narrow down the people who are your m possible competition. What is the biggest advantage on a market? Have you any idea? Just throw up something. What is the biggest advantage on a market? So if you come to a market... Cost. Cost? Yeah, your cost. Your, your cost. cost, okay. Price. Just get... Connections. Connections, okay. Product. What's the main problem if you come to a market? Being late. Being late for what? With your product. With your product because of? Because, because somebody already is on the market. So the biggest advantage on the market is if you come as the first one. And if you have time, let's say you make popcorn and you are the only popcorn seller in the city. If you sell popcorns for half a year as the only one in Mostar, in Mostar, I'm telling you a true story. One guy in Mostar beside the old bridge made popcorn for half a year. He made one million marks. And then a TV company came and told his story about he, how he got rich through selling popcorns. Then came the other popcorn guy, okay? And after the second popcorn guy, there came the third popcorn guy. And so everybody now is selling popcorn beside the old bridge. And of course, nobody is making a big money, but they are making still enough to live from that. But if he would be silent and didn't enjoy that promotion on the TV, he would be still today the only one who is selling popcorn and everybody would think that that guy is just one guy selling popcorn, what else? But one million with popcorn in half a year, that's, that's a mission. <coughs> so be afraid of ideas which already have somebody in that market. If, you, if already competition is on the market, your chances to grow and to succeed against somebody who is already placed on the market are really low. So, but everybody who is making a startup says, but we need money. We, we need, firstly, the money, then we will develop our idea. For what do you need your money? For what do, do you want to take money from somebody else? Do you think that somebody is giving money just as gift? So you can spend it like you want? No, that's my money, and if you want my money, you need to deserve it. Why? Here, you can get money for, yes, yeah. okay, you can get money for, a working prototype. So if you're selling something physically, it means you need a prototype which actually works. So you need, if you're selling a service, then you need a service with already existing customers. A service idea is not worth nothing if you don't find at least 10 customers and convince me that you can find 100, but you need money to find those 100. You can get money for travel costs. Let's say you have a great idea to open something between France and Algeria, 
and you didn't travel to France and Algeria and you don't have the money to travel that lot, you can get money to travel to realize your idea. And you can get money for the fees for opening a company. You want to open a company in Bosnia and Herzegovina? A small company is 162 km. A small company. A big company, DOO, is 2,000 km. That's still nothing, and you can get money for that. So, but what is not worth our money? Your idea? You, nobody will pay you for idea. Nobody will pay your time. So if you write in your business plan, my hour is 15 euros an hour, and I work 40, 50 hours a week, and so on, and so on, and that's 5,000 euros a month, and that's your application for getting money at an investor, you d will not get that money for your time. It's, it's an ignorance to, to write even that you want money for your time. Everybody who did a startup invested himself or herself Purely in that company, you have a great company here in Sarajevo called Atlant B BH. The the founders of those com of that company worked uh, at least 90, 90 hours a week, and nobody paid them for two years. So they worked two years without holiday weekend and something, and bring up a, uh, bring up a big company because of that. So you need to give your time at least. You will not get the money for a scribble. You scribble down something and you want money for that scribble, that will be great, you see, we have scribbled it already. Yeah? <laughs> so that's not worth any money, and a not working prototype. You can, get, you can get an idea about physical product, which will be great, like a, uh, like a laser who cuts buildings down. Great idea, but build that laser, then we will talk about that. Yeah? So not working prototypes are not being financed. So, as I, as an investor, as a business angel, tell you that you don't need investment capital every time. It isn't always necessary. So you need to think it true. And it, the first step is not to get some investment capital. The first thing to think is, will you go along the way alone or with somebody else? And if you want somebody's money, then you need also a strong partner, which means you don't get only his money, you get his connections. So if you're working uh, an idea about cars and uh, I want to invest in you, I'm from the IT branch, and somebody from the logistics branch wants to invest you. So who will you take? Of course, those guys from the logistics because he knows much more about cars than myself and he, his connections are worth to you because he is every time in touch for some vehicles. So think about that. If you choose a partner, you don't choose just his money, you choose his connections and you should use them. Your project can de develop further. So if you come to a point where your project is just stuck because you, don't, you need ma money for marketing, for producing some products, for going out on a second market and so on, that's the point where you need some else's money, if you can get your own money. And you need a lot of money for marketing, that's a big reason to give somebody a lot of money. But you can get all these points through Kickstarter. You can kickstart your project, and get customers, and you get your customers the product they deserved after you developed it. So you get money, you don't give shares of your company out to somebody else, and you stay the only owner of that company and still have money to finish your tasks. So that's called lazy money. One old guy sits on the beach, gives you money, and calls you, the programmer there in the hole, and says, oh, where is my project? Didn't you finish it already? And all the other guys are looking at you, and you need to work, and everybody is living on your stakes, even that guy on the beach. So you should think about lazy money. That's the term you will hear it often on conferences about startups. It's, uh, lazy money isn't, isn't good at all, and lazy money is that money which you get from somebody who doesn't want to be involved in your project. So if somebody else says you, I will give you the money, but I don't want to hear any uh, from you. I just want to see my profit after one year. Then you shouldn't get that money from that guy because he's uh, useless. 
So what's the ideal scenario? So from your point of vision. So you have an idea and develop it in a working prototype without competition. So that's, we, for each of that word in that sentence, we had one slide and at least five minutes talk. So you have an idea and develop it, a work, and develop, develop a working prototype or a service with customers, but without competition. Great, great starting point. Then you need some money, you kickstart it, your prototype or your service, and get money to open a company. That's the next step. You show your seriousness if you open a company. Then you use an incubator. In Sarajevo you have at least five, where you can get a working space for free if you just open the company. So you don't have to pay for a working space, you can get it for free. Just use that position in Sarajevo. You finish your product and sell it online. That's the ideal scenario. If you need to sell it offline, okay. But if we talk about some startups worth investing, then it should be saleable online. And you get customers. That's a, that's a breaking point, therefore it's in black. So it's a breaking point. If you go all those steps through and you don't get customers, then you should stop. But if you get customers, then that's great. And then comes a problem. You get too many customers and, scale, and you can scale up the production or the service. And that's the point where you say, okay, I'm ready to get some investment capital, to get some connections, to work with somebody together and to get an investment. So you pitch the project so to some business angel networks like ours and you can eventually get money. So is your idea worth a penny? Right? No. There is no way that your idea is worth anything. And I will tell you a story from a guy from Sarajevo. That's him. He is now 21 years old, Emil Hajric. With 18, you can click, uh, I will give the professor the link to the uh, Al Jazeera website, but you can go search it in Al Jazeera, just his name and surname, and you will find a documentary about him. I will tell you shortly uh, what he did and why I present you him. Emil is the only guy, is the only guy in Bosnia and Herzegovina or with the Bosnian origins who didn't make he didn't, didn't make any mistake in his business career. Any. He didn't do any mistake. And that's the, I made some, I made many, and Edin, the ma main guy in the Bizu, made uh, also many uh, mistakes. But all those mistakes and all this experience, if we start a new project, we don't do the same mistakes again. But Emil, without any experience, didn't do the, those mistakes. I will tell you what are those mistakes. The first mistake I did is I went to college. He didn't. He didn't went to college, and that was a great idea because he could found his company with 18 years. He went with 18 years to the US and got already investment capital of $20,000 and failed. What, what, what is failed? He, get, he got lazy money. And that guy gave him a deadline for three months to achieve some goals, and he didn't. But he got rid of that guy and sustained in working on his idea. And he came back to Bosnia, to Sarajevo, and worked over and over on his idea. And he didn't want to work for someone. He got really great opportunities to work for high salaries in the US, but he didn't want to. So he worked on his project, he worked on his project. You, you hear that passion? He worked for, on his project, he didn't get any penny, he worked on his project. His mother said, you are a fool, he worked on his project. His father wanted to uh, change his surname because of his son. He, he just kept on working on his project and what happened? He, he, he got the tipping point. That's the point where everything starts to go high up and everything changes. He got a one press publication, which is TechCrunch, about his idea, and he got so many new clients that he needed to move to USA three days later. So he opened the company again in the US, but this time on his uh, name, and just in a half a year he refuses to sell shares for one million dollars. So imagine you're sitting in Sarajevo, you have five marks in your pocket, you have a great idea, you work on it, three days later you are in the US, and six months later somebody comes and says, come give me 5% of your company, and then I will give you $1 million. And you say no. 
Yeah? Okay, that's the mistake which uh, almost everyone would do, but Emil didn't. That's the difference. And then he gets to 20 employees. 20 is when if you have a company is much. And then he refuses to sell shares to Yahoo for 20 billion. Okay? Then Yahoo comes and says, yeah, Emil, you know your company is nice. Give us 12% of your company for $20 billion. And he says, no, I don't want to. Great, okay, now he has 120 employees. He has now 120 employees, didn't sell any share of him. And instead of opening office in Bosnia, he opens one in Argentina. That's also one mistake we did. We opened the office in Bosnia. <laughs> so Emil didn't do any mistake. And just watch the documentary about him, and you will see you will see how, how easy he talks about that idea, how casual he is. So, but the point is, money doesn't make you happy. You cannot sit with the same ass on two chairs. There is no possibility to that. You cannot sleep in two beds. You cannot drive two cars at the same time. You can have more than four wives at the same time and so on. So there is no way to succeed because money doesn't make you happy. What's the biggest learning point after 10 years investing and doing stuff and business? The way you go is more important than the goal. Because if you have one goal in your life and you achieve it, you will feel good about that about for f five, seven days, maybe two weeks. And that's it. If you don't get the goal, if you don't achieve that goal, you will be disappointed for a lot of months. Okay? But if you enjoy in the way, in, if you stay behind your idea, if you love your project, your business, then the way is so nice and it doesn't matter even what happens there. You know where you want to get, you know your where, you know how, what people can walk on that bridge, you know who do you want to let swim in your beach and so on. So the way is more important than the goal and that's one hard lesson. So, and at the end, you should know that if you don't risk, you have no fun. So I worked for a business angel in, in Germany. He didn't want to invest in projects that have a higher risk than 2% of failure. And that was one boring job. So I get about 200 applications every month. One or two met my criteria. And that's about 25 ideas per year. And he invested in one and a half ideas. So if you don't risk, you ha don't have fun and it's boring and you then start to get involved in politics and so on and your life just sucks. So if you want to stay in contact, we can directly communicate through Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. I'm Neximus with two S. Yeah, Neximus, Comba, they and everything you know. So just connect. Uh, I will stay here for questions, of course. But if you have any questions further on, just contact me. Hi, Nedim, what's up? I have a question. Just ask me, and I will give you the answer if I know. I don't know also everything. So that's it. I hope you don't uh, rely on your idea and start working on something. So thank you.